Good day, Valley family. I hope you're all well. Uh, it's a beautiful day. It's Tuesday, um, and uh, we really can't complain about bad weather we've had the last while. Yeah, it's wonderful for me to connect with you, even though it's in this way. Um, but I must say, as Valley Church, we have become quite tech-savvy um, through this time. Every every Sunday, it's like just a new thing added to our YouTube channel um which is quite cool the other day kanya even said um you know she wants to skype zoom whatsapp call um play date so um yeah we had a good laugh um we miss you we miss just the hugs we miss the the family vibe um you know we've seen some of you while walking in heart bay from a distance greeting um keeping our distance or maybe picking up some goods from your homes um but it's it's just awkward not to give you hugs uh, but we know that we will be reunited and it will be good and that this time has also been good even though it's it's been hard um i'm sure most of us have got some kind of a testimony of this time as well uh, so we we thank god for that on uh, on sunday grant preached a beautiful sermon um purpose in the pain and when I was asked to do this devotion uh, something started brewing in my heart and then on Sunday when Grant preached he basically stole it now I'm just I'm just kidding Grant um, I know it's on God's heart um, that's why we didn't even compare notes or share thoughts um, but yeah the the theme that I have for today I hope would uh, build on, uh, piggyback, whatever you want to call it, on the message of Sunday. If you haven't listened to Sunday's message yet, um, please go and do that. Um, It was excellent. So, those that have listened, you know it's about pain. And um, my topic today is rejoicing in the suffering. Now, before you switch off this video and because you think it might be suffering listening through this devotion, I want to encourage you to stay tuned in because uh, there's good news and there really is a gift wrapped in this in this suffering. Um, so please, please bear with me because it um, will hopefully encourage you and give you a new perspective on difficult times. So just... A little bit of a, a background just on us um, as many many of us many of you as jam we have also been through a, a difficult time these last few weeks uh, you can imagine just ministry not being able to continue the way uh, that we have in the past you know we can't minister to people we've got to find um, creative ways like zoom meetings and you know whatsapp uh, just video calls, all these things. Um, We have not been able to do camps. Uh, We have not been able to receive any teams from abroad. Uh, Financially, it's been been tough. It's been probably one of the toughest times ever for us as an organization, just because um, many of our lovely uh, friends and supporters um, are, are also struggling. And like I said, camps, teams are just not happening, which... They also um, help with our, our f- with our finances. So um, it has been it has been a tough time. And one thing that Minion and I have learned over the last few years is that hard is not bad. It's when we stopped and looked back, um, difficult times, hard times that we've been through before 2020 has actually taught us some amazing lessons. Uh, we've been able to grow from it. I mean, I can recall times when I, you know, have laid on the floor just disappointed, confused. Um, those of you that have heard Mechie's testimony a while ago in church, you know, with miscarriage that we had, um, just a lot of financial um, struggles, um, disappointments in the mission field and I can just remember 
periods where I, I was really down. Um, but thankfully, through God's grace, I um, was able to get through it stronger. And like Grant said on Sunday, you know, sometimes only at the end when you really realize uh, the benefit of the time. But one of the main things was just our our development, our resilience, um, how God has given us a, a sense of patience. And we we had to learn that. We had to make a decision to say, you know what, we're not going to just sit in despair and let this thing overcome us. We, we are going to um, rise above it. We're going to keep our eyes on God. We're going to just grow in faith. Um, and so those, those times have actually prepared us for, for this year. Um, so we've learned that hard is not bad. Um, and today I want to talk a little bit about that. So, yeah, that's, that's enough about us um, and, you know, the, the jam jammers. Michi and I are working through Romans at the moment and um, call it a coincidence. I know God, there's never, never coincidence. But on Sunday night, we read Romans 5, which just connected with this theme of suffering. And um, I want to read for you. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Um, it's Romans 5, verse 4. No, verse 3. We can rejoice when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with His love. Some translations in verse 3 it says, um, We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that our sufferings produces perseverance, um, and perseverance develops strength, and strength, um, hope, I mean, character, hope. So, rejoicing in suffering is a is a is just a weird concept. It's one of those, it's like the Beatitudes, it's just such an upside down uh, way of thinking about just reality and what matters and it, it's just so different from from the world um, rejoicing in suffering I mean if you think about that what do you want to do in difficult times I mean even then this lockdown lockdown you you want to be mad you want to f- maybe find someone to blame you want to you want to complain you you're often confused and stuck and um, yeah frustrated uh, that's certainly how I feel at times anxious. But here Paul is saying that we, we need to rejoice. Now, let's let's stop for a moment and just look at the context a little bit um, at, at Paul. You know, we we know Paul, the, the missionary, uh, he, a few years later in Philippians, he also talked about rejoice, Philippians 4. Rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. Uh, And then just a few verses later, don't be anxious for anything. Um, But in everything, in prayer and supplication, make your request known by God. Um, And the God of all peace will will guard your hearts. We we know that verse very well. We've learned that song in Sunday school. Uh, Philippians 4, verse 4, say, for bleu in the year. It's one of the, you know, the first songs. I knew, well, if we think about Paul, when he wrote this letter, he was in prison. And it's not, we know it's not the prisons we have today. It was a deep, dark prison. He was chained um, in, in Rome. And you think, like, how how can Paul tell us to be joyful? Um, look where he is. Um, if we look in in Philippians 1, that that f- that first first chapter of Philippians, where he thanks the Philippians for their uh, for their gift, 
But then he also encourages them. Listen to this um, in verse 27. Um, Let me just look at not that was not twenty seven. I apologize. Um, all I want you to know, verse twelve, my dear brothers, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. Wait a minute, Paul. You you said everything that has happened here, the the suffering, the um, yeah, critics, everyone just talking bad about you. Um, Everything that has happened has helped to spread the good news. Just look at, at that perspective. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I'm in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak message, uh, God's message without fear. And he goes on and talks about how some are preaching Christ out of envy and rivalry. These people are, are preaching out of jealousy and envy. Um, but he said they preach out of selfish ambition, not sincerely intending to make my chains more painful. But, w but that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice. I'm going on a little bit of a tangent here, but I love this piece of Paul because he's just saying listen I'm in a mess I'm here in a prison but hey I'm more effective here than I am outside because I'm able to minister to the palace God I'm able to through my example inspire other believers to also um, be bold in their faith and yes there are bad things there are people you know taking advantage and and I've got other agendas and preaching, but you know what? I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm going to rejoice because the gospel is being preached. Look at that perspective. And now we can understand why Paul would say re rejoice in, in suffering. Because hard is not bad. Um, in fact, hard can be very, very, very good. And it can bring a lot of glory to God. Um, but we need to make that mind shift as well. So that's just a that's just a little bit about about Paul. Uh, we can go on and on and, and talk about him and shipwrecks and um, his journeys, and what what he's learned. But coming back to Romans five, um, in verse one it says, "Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith." Now we know if, if we read, "Therefore," we have to ask. What is it there for? Um, and it refers to the previous chapter in verse uh, chapter 4 where it talks about Abram and Abram's faith and I was justified by faith. And um, I want to say that we can't go on this whole idea of rejoicing and suffering without faith. In fact, faith is, is the element that can really make us able to, to have a mindset like this, to really... Rejoice because faith helps us to to look at the bigger picture, to trust in God's faithfulness, to trust that God is in control, and like Grant said, He's got a purpose. Um, and then He goes on to say, because um, God, because of Jesus Christ, sorry, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Have you ever thought about this, just peace in this time? Because um, I feel like the the idea here, you know, faith is is the element or the the substance, as Hebrews talks about, um, that actually helps us here to to be able to rejoice, and um, because Christ is our peace. And um, aren't you just so glad that you? You've got a peace in this time that transcends understanding where people might look at you and say, well, how, can you, how can you be at peace? You can say, you know what, I, I've got Christ. And um, we've just been able to have great conversations with people in this time because we know, we know the end of the story. We, we know where we are going. Um, we know that this time on earth 
is just a passing by. We we're actually just camping, like here on a postal. We we are on a tent. Um, we're we're citizens of heaven. We're not made to be comfortable here. Um, in fact, Jesus said, you know, suffering will be very, very much a part of of our lives here on earth uh, because we we have not arrived we haven't been in glory yet um in this new living translation the the study bible I actually love it says um then we will become but until now but up until then we need to overcome so i just want to read a, a quick thing here from the study bible as well that i think really explained romans because romans is quite tricky um and he refers to to Romans 5, chapter 5 onwards. He says, or well, they say, to understand the next four chapters um, from Romans 5 onwards, it helps to keep in mind the two-sided reality of Christian life. On the one hand, we are complete in Christ. On the other hand, we are growing in Christ. We're becoming more like Him. We enjoy the peace that comes from bring, being made right with God, but we still face daily problems that often help us grow. So it's the two sides of the coin. We, we are accepted. We, we're adopted into his family. We're made right. We're justified. But we're also um, being sanctified, and that's a daily journey. And um, difficult times uh, are part of that. And... Um, we look throughout Scripture, we see that, you know, Grant referred to Job. Um, we've just been thinking about Joseph, um, you know, in, in Potiphar's house. And, you know, at the end we'd say, whatever you intended for evil, God intended for good. Um, and just to think how God, in His supremacy, can use difficult times that sometimes are caused by us, but like we see now, in in this case of the coronavirus, it just happens. It's part of our broken, sinful world with disease, and because we're not there yet, um, you know, in in glory with Him, and so these are opportunities for us to to be sanctified and to grow. But we need to choose: Am I going to embrace this, or am I just going to let this um, overtake me? And I I know, guys, this is. Easier said than done, um, but what matters is that we is that we practice. We can't just learn about the fruit of the spirit. Okay, I'm gonna try peace or joy or God. Give me, give me patience. You know, I've heard one guy once said, "I'm not gonna pray for you for patience. I'm gonna pray for you for the opportunity to learn patience." <laughs> Which actually saying, um, "Yeah, you're gonna." You're going to be challenged. I'm going to pray for you to to grow in that because, you know, like we do on camps here, we're all about experiential learning. There's actually a in the beginning of camps when we do training, we explain the cone of learning and research show that, um, you know, the, the top of the cone, it's a ten percent of what people hear, they actually remember, um, which is quite scary. When you think about school and even sitting in church you know it's if you're just listening but it goes down you know 20 percent of what you of what you hear and see and then it goes down and then at the bottom is is 90 percent and that's that is when you are involved when you're doing it when you're explaining when you are um you know taking part and that's the area of experiential learning so they say 90 percent um you then remember um when you're actually taking part, and so I think that's that's part of this Christian life. We can we can you know hear, we can even talk about, it, we can see it, but it only really grows in us when we have opportunities to to step out and to feel it on our on our bodies and to be in a spot where you lose where you lose a lot and you really have to put your faith into action or you you lock down and you really have to learn patience with this family member or, or whatever um it is 
the you know the the practice going into practice and not just being stuck um, at theory and so yeah it's funny Paul was not the only one that was just um, that had this teaching of rejoicing and suffering um, Grant actually I think at the end of his message on Sunday he he uh, quoted James saying you know James chapter 1 verse 2 it says uh, get my Bible count it all joy count it pure joy my brothers when you face trials of many kinds count it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance again like Paul develops perseverance Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And so this idea, because Paul also talks about suffering produces endurance, perseverance. In Afrikaans, we've got a great word. Um, it's called fuspate. And we sometimes have fuspate kampe. You know, it, it's just this idea of pushing through, even, even if it's hard. Um, and we do that, for example, for a sports team. We have these fitness camps and, you know, Fuspe Kampe, where it, it helps us to to build that endurance because you can't just learn to endure. A marathon athlete needs to put in those hours and, and learn uh, perseverance through that, through feeling the pain. I remember the... This idea of, of fuspate and character, because I never, you know, un understood character um, up until we really started teaching it in our um, our leadership courses. And so the first time I heard character was in a Grade Seven rugby match when we were in Bloemfontein playing. It was raining. We were down. Um, you know, I think like two tries we still had to get in order to win the game. And the ref was really against us, as in really. And um, I just remember we were in the line out. I was at the back and our coach was there in the rain. I remember my dad was also somewhere there and just said, boys, now it's time to show character. And you know, I re didn't really know what that meant up until someone explained it to me that you know, it's it's in difficult times when you're in that pressure cooker, when you're down. That's when character comes in. That's when it starts shining. And I think a great image that, that another friend explained to me in this whole sanctification and difficult times theme, you want to call it, is when they purify silver. Um, many of you have probably heard this, how they do it. But you, you purify silver through... Um, adding immense heat and pressure um, you know putting putting silver in a pot and then it turns into this liquidy um, substance and what happens is all the impurities come to the surface and then the I don't know what you call a silversmith or whoever works with it scoops off that impurities and then add more add more heat continue and more impurities come up and, and scoop and that's actually how uh, how you purify silver and that's that's the same with us that um, God uses difficult times um, to let us grow give us that opportunities for the impurities to be scooped away and I can share testimonies and testimonies even in this time of, of pressure and and heat where yuckiness have come out of me and I've seen, man, where does this come from? And it, I had time to look at my character. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a sinful, this is a character flaw that I need to bring to the feet of Jesus. Um, and so it is an incredible opportunity. Even Peter uh, spoke about it in First uh, Peter 1 from verse... 6 it says here in this I greatly rejoice though now for a little while 
Remember, we're on earth for a little while. Um, you may have you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Friends, uh, today I want to say to you, it is opportunity and may we rejoice. It doesn't make sense rejoicing in suffering, but it's, it's what sets us apart um, as Christians. And I've, I've really thought about how are we different from this world, from society in this time, because we're all going through this. But as Christians, how are we responding differently? Are we showing with our lives that we are indeed citizens of a different reality, citizens of heaven? Uh, that doesn't mean we are some sickos that just rejoice in pain and feel good about it and deny the realities of the day. Like we need, we need to read and and be on top, and and it is going to affect us. And you know, the the trauma, the uh, the loss, everything we're going through it. You know, we shouldn't show this world that Christians are these people that don't feel anything or are like you know, weird, don't have, you know, real emotions, still go through that, but really show at the end of the day that, you know what, um, God is in control, and He has a purpose, and therefore we can rejoice, because He's got a purpose, and we're actually growing, and we're learning through this, we're learning that He's our security, uh, like Grant has said many times, uh, that he is our solid rock, and that actually we still have a long way to go to to become more like him. We have not arrived yet we We are on this journey of becoming more like christ in our in our character a year ago, and I want to end off with this a friend of of mine we were just having a conversation and I was just saying how many of our close friends are really going through hard times, whether it's at their workplace, financially struggling, um, physically with, with some um, yeah, with, with some challenges, relationally. And um, this friend of mine said, you know, I, I have a sense God is really building resilience in us. And, you know, I only got to know that word resilience a few years ago. Um, but for me, it's, it's a lot like fast Um because I'm not a fundi on end-time studies, you know, um, when is Christ going to return, all of this. But I do know we're in the last days, and I do know, and Scripture talks about it is, it is going to get bad, and um, people will be deceived, and, um, you know, we... We don't know the specifics about timing and, and all of these things. And for me, uh, I know we just need to be ready and we need to preach the gospel because the gospel hasn't come. And at the same time as all these bad things will happen, God's kingdom is coming more rapidly than ever. Look at the, the underground church movement, how it's just exploding. So the kingdom is coming, but we also... There's, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of suffering, and in this time we are going to have to stand strong as Christians. We're going to not, we shouldn't be shaken. We should stand on God's word, on God's truth, and not be deceived. We should show this world that who God is, um, who this loving Father is that we serve and that we follow. So may we rejoice in this opportunity uh, to to grow in, in character and it's it's painful it's brutal um, but you know what we we citizens of heaven and we get to put our trust in the one that knows uh, the one that's the beginning and the end and uh, we get this opportunity to become more like him every day so I hope that's encouragement to you uh, go ahead and, and study Romans a bit more 
Romans 5, um, Paul's uh, journey. And uh, yeah, we, we're in this together. We love you. Um, let me just pray. Lord, thank you that we can learn from you, Jesus, uh, as well, that you endured the cross, that the pain, the suffering, for the joy that was set before you. Lord, we know it was so painful, but we know why you did it. Um, you chose to, to do it, to be obedient, to have faith, um, and to for the joy that was set before you endure. Lord, thank you that we can become purified every day. Thank you that you're not giving this corona as a punishment or anything, but Lord, it's a reality of a broken world, but that you still use it for your glory uh, to draw us closer to you and to make us uh, become more like you. But Lord, we know that that also gives us a responsibility every day in the way we react. Uh, so may we choose to rejoice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.